You may have heard that the Supreme Court is a thing in the United States of America. You may be yourself an American and thinking, how does that, that even happen? Basically picked by the president, but then with the approval? Uh, what is, how does this work? What does it mean? And also, it's not just the Supreme Court. The president seems to be appointing all kinds of court things, and there's state courts too, and it's very confused, but they have a lot of impact on who we are, how we work as a country, the decisions that get made, and, and also the people who get appointed to the lower courts are the ones who learn how to be good justices and move up and eventually become like the pool from which potential Supreme Court nominees are made. But we don't think a lot about how those lower courts work, how they happen, what they mean, and so, and so, and so, we're doing a thing right now. We're doing a show on the court system in the US, how it works, how you can be involved, the, op the, the chances where, where people actually influence who gets to be justices. It's basically like a crash course, but we're doing it on our new Complexly YouTube channel, the channel for our whole company, trying it out as a pilot thing. I think that it's so great, and of course it's hidden from the world because it's on this new YouTube channel, and I wanted you to know about it. So I'm going to show the first episode right here, right now on this channel, and if you like it, you can go check out the rest over on youtube.com slash it's youtube.com slash complexly. I thought we didn't have the URL, but it turns out that we do. Okay, without further ado, the first episode in our series on the courts. If you are an engaged citizen of the US, or God forbid you get push notifications of the news on your phone, you hear a lot about what our president is doing or what Congress isn't doing every day, all the time. But if that's how you're staying informed about how our government works and what that means for you, you're probably only getting two-thirds of the story. I want to talk about the federal court system, the part of our government that figures out how our laws apply to our real lives. Except what even are the courts? How do they fall into the big picture of U.S. government, and how did it get this way? To start our journey of knowing the things we should know, let's go back to basics. In the U.S., we have three branches of government. The legislative branch, where Congress comes up with the laws, the executive branch, the president gets to sign or veto those laws, and the judicial branch, our federal court system, interprets what the laws actually mean. This all comes from the Constitution, another pretty major thing that the court is tasked with interpreting, where our founding fathers decided that there needed to be a separation of powers because they didn't want the U.S. to feel like the monarchy they had just fought so hard to leave. The idea was that if any branch tried to take a little too much power, the other branches could be like, hey, that's our job. Get back in your lane. So Article 1 lays out the powers and responsibilities of Congress. Article 2 talks about what the president can and can't do. And Article 3 says that the judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one supreme court and in such inferior courts as the Congress may from time to time ordain and establish. Basically, we're going to have one big powerful court and probably other courts, but we'll figure that out later. It's the shortest and kind of the fuzziest description of powers of all the branches of government. It left out all the details about who sits on the courts and how many courts there should even be, leaving all that up to Congress to decide. And like most of the American experiment, We've been making it up as we go along. In the first ever session of Congress, lawmakers passed the Judiciary Act of 1789, which spelled out how the whole federal court system would work. Remember that ordaining and establishing part? Congress figured out that one Supreme Court might not be enough, you know, for a whole nation. So they decided that there should be three levels of federal courts, with the Supreme Court being the highest. That's how we got district courts. These are the lowest level of the federal court system, where trials about federal federal law actually happen with one judge, a jury, witnesses, the whole deal. There were originally 13 district courts, one for every state at the time, with an extra court in both Virginia and Massachusetts because they had bigger populations. But now we have a lot more states and a lot more cases, so there are a total of 94 districts today. If you go to district court and you don't agree with the result of that trial, you can appeal it to the next court up, which helpfully is called the United States Court of Appeals. Love it when names make sense. These are the 13 courts, each serving a different region or circuit of the U.S., where you can ask higher, more powerful judges to reverse the decisions of the district court. Appealing is kind of like asking the district court if you can, like, borrow their car, and they say no, so you go and ask the other parent 
the appellate court instead. In the Court of Appeals, a panel of three judges from the region reviews your case, and they can decide to either uphold or overturn the district court's decision. Side note on the Court of Appeals, you may have also heard it called the Circuit Court, and there's a reason for that. In the original court system from 1789, the Supreme Court justices rode circuit, traveling around from district to district to hear trials in lower courts, which was kind of a lot of work because planes weren't a thing. The Supreme Court justices were like, hey, Congress, we're doing a lot of traveling here and we're tired and also it's dangerous. Like, riding the circuit court trail sounds like a really cool idea until one of your six judges dies of dysentery. So in 1891, they got rid of the traveling and they took away their responsibility to hear appeals by creating a new court above the circuit court. Yep, it's the Court of Appeals again, and in the Judicial Code of 1911, Congress moved their trials down to the district courts and got rid of circuit courts altogether. If you go to district court and then appeal that decision, and then the Court of Appeals upholds it, and you want to appeal that decision, you've got to go all the way to the Supreme Court, the final boss of the federal court system. The Judiciary Act of 1789 gave the Supreme Court six justices. Yeah, only six. We added more later. It also decided that the Supreme Court had the ability to hear cases before any of the other courts, known as original jurisdiction, if those cases didn't fit in lower courts, usually when a case was a dispute between two states. But their most important function, and the majority of what the Supreme Court did, and still does, is hear appeals. When the court was first created, they were required to issue decisions on all appeals from lower courts, but that was a lot of cases that they had to review, whether they thought it deserved a review or not. So near Nearly 100 years after the Supreme Court was created, Congress came up with certiorari, a system to decide which cases the court will review. Otherwise, they might still be hearing cases about whether tomatoes are a fruit or a vegetable. Yes, that was a real Supreme Court case. Once the appellate court issues a decision, either party to that case can petition for a writ of certiorari, or a writ of cert, asking the Supreme Court to review their case and telling them why they think it deserves review. The court gets nearly 10,000 of these petitions a year, and only accepts about a hundred of them. What are some of the reasons that a justice might want to review a case? Sometimes it's because they think the decision of a lower court or the way they applied the law is something that could impact the entire country, so they want to consider it carefully, think about all of the intended and unintended effects that application could have, and try to get it absolutely right. Other times they'll review a case because the appellate courts in different regions of the country have been deciding on similar cases in different ways, so the Supreme Court needs to step in and decide decide how to apply federal law in the same way across the entire country. But no matter why the Supreme Court takes up the case, it's a big deal. By the time a case gets to them, it's already touched tons of smart people in the court system who have spent a lot of time thinking about the case and the laws it deals with and what those laws should mean today. And once those judges decide, the way they interpret those laws affects what they will mean in the future. Who are those judges, by the way, and how did they get there? We're gonna talk about all the people who decide who can become a judge, which is important because you're probably one of them. Stay tuned to learn exactly how the court system affects you and how you can affect the court system.